Okay, so now we've got to make the collar for the uh, wood stove pipe to go up through the ceiling, the connector for the uh, for the stove itself. And I've got to make a four um, four and something inch um, circular band. And this little uh, kind of a fake out hospital bender, which is a uh, uh, you know a Harbor Freight special. Works really good in a lot of ways, but when you get into really tight angles, it doesn't work so good. So I'm trying an experiment here and see how this works. And I've just welded on a little tab right onto the to the arch of the bend. Now what I really forgotten to do is I need to cut the rest of this off. So uh, let me go uh, cut that off and be right back. Okay, let's try this again. Uh, I've got the little clip in. We got the the basic arch began. And that's what happens. You begin the arch with this thing, and it just starts skipping around. But with that little clip in there, I think it's going to be able to hold it. So slide it in there. Yep, and it's going to grab it. Rotate that baby all the way around. And that's going to give us our full, almost our full, uh, circle. Let's see, how can we get the full circle? That would be a really good thing. Hmm. Well, that's going to take some thought. And uh, we're out of strap. And what I was hoping to do is to start with like a 10-foot piece of strap and just circle it and cut it, just like I did on the uh, on the larger pieces. Later on today, we're going to go get some more strap, and uh, we'll come back to this. But uh, in the meantime, I'm going to think about how to get that thing to complete the circle, because it should be able to do it without any problem. After doing the um, the small circle for the cap uh, for the uh, connector for the stovepipe, uh, I realized that this uh, this die is just way too small, and I have to dance with it a bunch after it. Uh, after I create the bend, so it's just not going to work. And so what I did is I had uh, this old piece of stainless laying around, uh, and I believe it's five inches. Um, and uh, I took it. How how big is it? Let's see. Four inches, <clears throat> which is exactly the right size to uh, to uh, hold or to form the <clears throat> the metal for to make the ring. So. I cut a little chunk off here, and it should fit right in there like that. And we're going to do what we did uh, over here about three weeks ago or so, is we're going to put a center in there, and then put a couple of supports out here, and uh, make ourselves a little uh, a little kind of a T cross with a hole through the center that would uh, you know make up for this die and, and be more of the size that I want it to be. So we're going to do that. And uh, follow along, and uh, of course it's uh, you know one more uh, detour in the process of making uh, the little mini. So in this case, um, I'm going to cut a little plug of steel off the off of the end here, and you can see I already started to make the cut. And so I started with this this bent piece of uh, two inch uh, coal roll, and uh, and I'm just going to cut a little plug off of the end of that, and then do all the machining. And it really uh, the the nice thing about this bent piece of coal roll is that it really doesn't matter in this case because once I put it in this I weld it all together and then I find the center so we're off to saw land here for about oh 10 or 15 minutes and let's put it up there and you can kind of see it's been all light now you can see we're just cutting that two inch plug. Okay, so we've got our base welded together. We've got our little uh, nuts welded out on the end here. So we've got a screw to put it into the floor. And you come on up, and we've got the straps cut, and we've got them formed. And now what I've done is come in and attach them. I just got them tacked right now to the base, and that's going to hold the the can. So we'll uh, step back here a little bit and see if I can slide that can in place without too much trouble. Plunk. It just slips right down in there. The, the strap holds the can in place. Can you see that? Yep, there you go. It kind of has a nice little look to it. 
and then uh, of course up on top uh, and I neglected to to uh, to um, film this part of the uh, process which is a pretty important part I'm gonna see if I can rotate this around a little bit and uh, we got a nice well bead uh, around the connection between the the uh, stovepipe cap and the stove itself uh, and that's going to be a real nice little connection there. Um, you know, I'll probably film the, uh, I've got eight more or seven more of these to do, so I'll probably film one of them. But right now what we've got is, uh, you know, kind of a beat up old rusty can. Uh, and later on we'll come in with the, um, with the, uh, uh, the wire brush and brush it out. And, you know, on the inside it's, uh, it's totally rusted out. Well, not rusted out, it's just that I, I put it in the fire and burn off the uh, the paint. So you can kind of see that uh, we're coming right along here. Let's see if we can spin this around and catch the other side of it. There it is. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And right now it's wiggling because the, uh, the strap is not uh, welded in permanently. So we'll move forward. See you in a while. Okay, our plug is cut, and now we just need to, to cut our uh, the the spacers between the plug and the outside edge. And I'm going to use this uh, channel that I got here a while back, and uh, we're going to cut four little short little spacers like that, one for each side and then one for the each of the other sides, and that'll give us enough to pretty much do what we need to do. And while those are cutting, what I'm going to do is take the uh, the grinder and come in and just kind of break the surface here because this is pretty rusted out so just break the surface so it'll get a decent weld once I come in and weld it There's our little spacers, so uh, probably I could kind of clean those up a little bit too, just to each on one side. That was hot off the press. There's two. We're going to wait a little bit longer for the other two to get sawn. But in the meantime, I think we could go ahead and uh, set ourselves up here. You getting that in the shot? Just barely. All right, let's bring it down a little bit. There we go. So, well, it looks like I cut it too wide. I'm wondering if there's a way I can come in. Well, the other thing we can do is just kind of machine this part down a little bit. Which way is easier? Cutting more of these or machining this down a little bit? Probably cutting more of these. But do I ever take the easy way? No, no, no. Let's go over and machine this.
a little bit wobbly, but hey, that's no big deal. One more pass and that's pretty much going to happen. this piece. Let's turn it around. Do a bit more. basically hogging this thing down so that uh, so that I can weld to it. So I'm not really worried about uh, any accuracies here or anything like that. Just get the metal off of there so that uh, so that the uh, the little sleeves will fit. probably take care of it. Looks like this is some pretty hard steel. Maybe 8620 or something like that because boy it's cutting really tough. I think it's just dulled my bit like nobody's business. Now we need to get a glove because it's going to be really hot. 
gonna go dip it in um, I'm gonna go dip it in uh, some water and uh, I'll be right back well it fits but just barely so I think uh, we'll take another you know twenty thousandths or so off of that and uh, and then that'll give us a better uh, a better fit okay there's our piece uh, you know not very straight but it doesn't really need to be and uh, I'm not really that attached to it being straight uh, basically what we're going to do here is weld it up and I'm probably going to weld it from this little side areas and then uh, flip it over weld the other side and then machine off this surface here and drill a hole straight through the center so uh, hang in there with me and uh, and we can uh, go ahead and weld this Alright, so we'll start right on this uh, this one segment here, just a little cap, same over here, I mean a tip to straighten them up, but uh, as I said, it's not my, it's not my critical issue here. Not the prettiest construction job in the world, but uh, certainly functional. And when we cut that hole in the center, it'll be totally centered. Now, uh, if that's 8620 in there, which I believe it is, then I need to let this cool very gently. Because welding it has heated it up to a place where, in fact, you can kind of start to see right over in this corner here how it's starting to, to uh, uh, case harden it. If I drop it in water right now, that thing will turn to uh, steel. Oh, no. It'll turn, uh, you know, to a, a transmission gear sort of uh, a piece of metal. And I'll never be able to get a hole through that. So we're going to let that set there and rest for a while. In fact, what I'd like to do is kick it up on the end. Kick it up there. There we go. And that allows this to not heat soak against the table or anything like that. And just cool off on its own. So that's probably going to be another half an hour or so before it's cool. So we're going to move on to other things.